Fred Film Radio from the Venice and National Film Festival. I'm Angela Cerbi, and I'm here to talk for the film April with Dea Columbe Gashvili, director of the film. Good. Was I right? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, listen, Dea, your film is, if we have to find a topic that can mm -hmm. synthesize the film, is about womanhood and the situation of women in Georgia, if I may say so. We find we have like the lead character, which is Nina, which is a a doctor. So she is she's a she has a developed personality, like an independent. She's an independent woman, and she has to deal with this uh, other side of womanhood, which is more patriarchally uh, oppressed. Mm -hmm. uh, which was your attitude toward this this uh, this issue when you were? preparing the film, which was your aim in telling the story? Thank you. Uh, if the aim was, uh, actually, the thing is that I grew up in this place, mm -hmm. and uh, I really, I, I always try to say, maybe it's too strange, but this film did start before I even started to make films, in a way, because I, as a child, was growing up in this place, and my grandmother is an educator, and she would work with the women in this region to teach them how to read and write because many could not. And uh, with that, she was also like helping to emphasize importance of education for their children. And she used to go from one house to another every day. She dedicated her entire life actually to this cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would take me with her uh, many very often because... Uh, my own mother was 16 uh, when she got pregnant with me, so and 17 when I was born. So for her not to leave the school, my grandmother needed to take me. Mm -hmm. And in one way or another, I don't know, this world of women who would be really talking to my grandmother because it was not only about re uh, learning how to read, but they would just confess or she was like a therapist to them in a way, it was always kind of part of my life since I was a child. And then when I grew up and I went to study, I came back and I went to this place and the children that I would play with um, when, I, when I was a child, now they're mothers and they have seven, eight children and um and I, I cannot say that their life circumstances became any better there. Mm -hmm. And I started to talk now to these women who are my age and who I understood that never had the choice of what they yeah. actually wanted to do in life. And abortion is not even a question no. because mm -hmm. it's uh, officially it's legal, officially, but it's impossible to obtain it. Yeah. So it's in a way, this like a good old way of a Soviet version of oppression when mm -hmm. you, of course, can drop out from the party <laughs> but but, you can't. but uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> you know. it's not uh, possible at the same time so um uh, this film somehow was a uh, was ne necessary, necessary somehow yeah. for me yeah, at least to it, make so it yeah. seems like the situation hasn't evolved that much and nina is trying to make this this situation change the the interesting and fascinating thing about the character is that she's so willing to help the others but she has no possibility to help herself in her private she, she has she has empathy with the world but she doesn't have empathy for her to herself uh that's true because i think that she seeks intimacy and she seeks closeness but then she is unable also to achieve it because I think this like overwhelming empathy that she has uh, to the world somehow leaves no space for personal feelings, mm -hmm. I would say, in a way. And she is, in a way, a very tragic character for me. But uh, And it was very difficult to create this kind of character. And uh, for the actress, Ia, it was really difficult. I mean, we tried, we were talking a lot, but at the same time, it didn't make any sense. So we, <laughs> I understood that she needed to embody this character rather than create some acting, um, I don't know, techniques yeah, which yeah, would yeah. help her. It was a totally not helpful, I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, one last very, very fast question about the, about the aesthetics. There are a lot of uh, frame of beauty, of nature, that you just opposed here and there in the movie, why that? Uh, 
It was for us in order to to. Or maybe um, for me, in a way, because I think that uh, when I was there preparing the film and I was preparing it for two years, I was like driving through the villages with cinematographer and it was really difficult things we would see and hear. And then we would be driving back to the hotel and it, we would see such beauty. And I just one day I remember that I said that Arseni, at least we see the beauty, mm -hmm. you know, if it... Because sometimes it was, we felt it's impossible maybe to make this film because it was difficult to make it without compromising anybody's uh, life in a way. But then this beauty was still there. And I think that cinema also requires to acknowledge that there is a space which is beyond stories and beyond the narratives. And it's maybe the world will inhabit at the same time. I agree, and we thank you for, for the choice. You. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, so thanks to Dia Kulumbegashvili, director of APRO, here from the Venice International Film Festival. I'm Angela Serbi for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>